All right, I'm going to move on uh, to have the great pleasure of introducing our third speaker for this session, Dr. Barbara Materna. Uh, Dr. Materna is an industri certified industrial hygienist and chief of the occupational health branch in the California Department of Public Health. She has researched extensive health topics over her career, and I'm very excited uh, to welcome her and listen to her comments today. Great, thank you very much. Um, I can't see myself on it, so I'm just gonna assume that's working unless you tell me something otherwise. Um, I, I'd first like to state that my comments today are based on my individual experience as a public health professional and don't reflect any policy positions of my employer. Um, and by way of background, as a certified industrial hygienist, I've long been involved with respirators in the workplace where there's clear standards and regulations governing respirator certification and how they um, are to be used. Um, I've done work on the use of respirators in healthcare as required under Cal OSHA's aerosol transmissible diseases standard and collaborated with NIOSH and OSHA to develop a respirator prote respiratory protection program toolkit for hospitals. But there have been a number of times during emergency responses when either certain categories of workers or members of the general public have been at risk for health effects from inhaled hazards. And we as public health officials have recommended respirators as a necessary control measure outside a formal respirator program. Um, and then the questions start to roll in such as, how much protection do respirators provide if they haven't been fit tested? What should people with pre-existing heart or lung disease be advised to do? What if respirators are used inappropriately and people aren't really being protected? Um, so my experience responding to these kinds of questions has largely been through California wildfire emergencies where the hazardous particulates in smoke or ash. Um, and I've worked on guidance for the use of respirators by the public or unfit tested outdoor workers. Um, including in US EPA's updated wildfire smoke guide. Um, but I just wanted to mention there's other emergencies where particulate hazards come up, such as volcanic ash from eruptions, mold exposure after floods, or infectious disease pandemics like COVID. And there are also non-emergency situations where the public might benefit from better use of respirators if they have access to clear and accurate information um, about the technical details, and they have equipment that's designed with their use in mind. So in my remarks, I'm gonna concentrate on the use of respirators by the public. For workers, I really think that the focus should be on how we can assure that these so-called non-traditional workers have the same level of protection as all workers who need to rely on respirators, even if the situations are more difficult. So I'm going to go through three questions. The first one, what is needed to provide the best protection for the public who use respirators without the benefit of fit testing? We tell the public that a respirator must seal closely to the face in order to provide adequate protection. But one drawback of N95 and other filtering face piece respirators is that it's difficult, if not impossible, to do an effective user seal check to assess their fit. Um, as compared to elastomeric half mask respirators. So having filtering face piece models on the market in multiple sizes that are proven to fit well to a variety of facial shapes and sizes would serve us better in situations where fit testing is not feasible. We really need to have manufacturers meet a minimum fit criteria before being allowed to market their products. We, we've had our stockpiles filled with products that fit poorly and then uh, learn when they're distributed in the middle of an emergency that they fail fit testing with a high proportion of users. Um, and I know that NIOSH has recognized this need um, to add this type of standard to the NIOSH certification process. Marianne talked about it earlier. Um, and they've began, uh, they began an effort to address it, but this work really needs to be completed and a standard put in, into place as soon as possible. There may also be a role for innovation and new product designs. The, the flexibility and stickiness of the face piece material in elastomeric half mask respirators 
make it easier for most people to get a very good seal. Um, and it's also much easier to do a user seal check. But these reusable respirators are often perceived as too industrial looking or too expensive to be considered acceptable. So newer kinds of lightweight devices with an enhanced ability to get a good face seal for a wide range of users and an easy way to check the seal would be beneficial. And um, acknowledging my pre the previous panelist, user acceptance testing of new devices um, uh, sorry, I just got was distracted by the note saying that my video is turned off, so I don't really know what that's about. But um, anyway, user acceptance testing was would also be critical to assess how useful um, they would be at addressing the needs of different groups. My second question seems to come up whenever we've recommended the use of respirators by the public. And that is, can N95s or other filtering face piece respirators be used safely by people with heart or lung conditions, including during physical exertion? And what special guidance might these people need? During wildfire emergencies, some jurisdictions put out the message that these respirators could harm people. And therefore, they shouldn't be used by people with pre-existing heart or lung conditions at a time when these same populations might be the ones who most need protection um, if they have to be outdoors in smoke or ash. Um, a similar issue now exists with COVID-19. Should older people with these conditions who are at higher risk for severe illness be using an N95 when they have to go out for better protection than a cloth face mask? Or does the respirator pose a risk? Um, this issue also comes up when respirators are recommended to protect outdoor workers from fire smoke and they've never been medically cleared for a respirator. Most guidance recommends that people speak with their physicians uh, before using a respirator, but the majority of physicians know very little about respirators or how much risk they may pose to users with different kinds of pre-existing conditions. So evidence-based guidance that speaks to when respirator use specifically might pose a risk would be very helpful. And per perhaps additional research is needed or just better translation of what is known about respirator use and potential risks. Um, in addition, physician education about respiratory protection can help them to be better prepared to provide accurate information to patients about these questions. And then the last question I'll address is what is needed to better communicate to the public about how to use a respirator properly. All of us who know anything about respirators cringe when we see images in the media, respirators worn with only one strap, the straps in the wrong places, the face piece covering uh, the mouth but not the nose, or the respirator put on upside down. So we need to better convey proper respirator use in the types of media the public uses nowadays. Lots of visuals, social media, short YouTube videos. Um, and this messaging should be developed by people with expertise in advertising and media campaigns and should be pilot tested and evaluated for its effectiveness. Another challenge I think that persists is the widespread use of the term mask, which means different things to different people, and in the end causes confusion among the public as well as public officials too. This is happening with COVID-19. People are confusing devices worn as source control with respirators to design to protect the wearer from inhaling hazardous particles. Um, so we've had to develop guidance to differentiate respirators from surgical masks, from cloth face coverings. Um, and it doesn't help that there are many technical details related to respirators that aren't widely understood. Somehow we need to get people comfortable with the word respirator um, when that is what we're talking about, um, what it is, how it works, what its limitations are, and where to go for accurate information from, from experts. Um, research could be helpful, as the previous panelists have, have noted, to evaluate knowledge and perceptions about respiratory protection and determine what is effective messaging. And as the most respected information source on respirators, I think that NIOSH has a role to play in this, even if the audience is sometimes the public rather than workers. 
Thank you.